with that, we're quickly going to move into the final session for the day, which is on innovations and emerging trends in payment systems. And our session is going to have inputs by Mr. Anthony E., who is the Associate Vice President, Partnerships and Alliances at Aditya Birla Payments Bank. Let's put our hands together and welcome Mr. Anthony E. Thank you very much for being with us. On the session, we're also joined by Mr. Sandeep Sethi, who is the Group Head and General Manager, Service Improvement Group at ICICI Bank. Let's put our hands together. Welcome, Mr. Sethi. We're also joined by Mr. Steve Nowak, who is the Chairman and CEO at Quisk. Let's put our hands together. Welcome, Mr. Nowak. We have with us uh, Mr. Jayad Aditya, who is the Head Strategic Alliances, Electronic Payment and Services Private Limited. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Aditya. And to moderate the session, we have with us Mr. K. Ramachandran, who is the Senior Advisor, Banking Technology, India Banks Association. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. And with that, I'd like to hand over the session to our moderator, Mr. Ramachandran. Hello. Good evening, everybody. We always hear the complaint. The payments are received late. So the session on payments also has arrived late. Okay. My predecessor who had made the presentation has made my job easier because I was trying to mentioned something about the history in this payments in the banking industry, especially in India. Anyway, instead of going through the full uh, life cycle, I will mention a few <coughs> important applications. We started with the branch banking and then moved on to ATMs internet banking, mobile banking, mobile wallets, then UPI, and now this year we are having new applications called Beam and Aadhaar Pay. So I don't know whether you have heard of this Beam and Aadhaar Pay. Beam has been launched by the Prime Minister recently. So you can do the transactions across 30 banks and it is connected with the UPI and also you can do transactions on USSG, that is a star 99 hash. And the latest one is the other pay, which makes it uh, much simpler, especially the customer need not have any mobile or card, he simply goes to the merchant who has a smartphone and using other authentication, he is able to do the payment transactions. Now the earlier speaker talked about the statistics of mobile phones. So that is one area I am also concerned because we have got a population of 133 crores out of which nearly 90 crores are in rural areas where the connectivity is poor, infrastructure is poor. And there are only 37 crore internet connections. So, so many others don't have internet connections. Smartphones, as he said, we are improving. I'm told that by next year, the India will be overtaking US in the number of smartphones. And it may reach about 340 million per year. So what I'm saying is, we have a diversified customers. We have at the one end smartphone, on the other end feature phones and there are people who don't have phones. 
So we have to look at payment applications which can meet the needs of all types of categories. In fact, we have Mr. Steve from Quiz, who is going to implement a new solution in the country which addresses this. And we have from Aditya Birla a new payment bank which is coming up. So we'll also hear from him what are the new solutions they can bring on the table for meeting the customers. And we already have ICCA Bank, who has been doing excellent work in bringing new technologies for both uh, branch banking, mobile banking, and uh, new areas, including blockchain, QR code. We will be hearing from him also. And Mr. Jayat Aditya, who is from the EPS. So let me first start with the, our guest, Mr. Steve. So Steve, you have brought in a new solution which is uh, supposed to work on all the three kinds of customers, smartphones, feature phones, and also pass machines. So can you please elaborate on this? Uh, thank you all for attending in this late session. What we've done at QUISC is build an advanced electronic debit platform to enable banks to offer their customers a digital solution for making payments using their mobile phone number and their PIN. And we have architected this system to be as agnostic as possible in terms of the user interface. So for instance, in the context of mobile phones, that means that we work on smartphones and we work on plain old feature phones and that we use SMS, not USSD, to confirm transactions. The way we've gone about this is to build a cloud-based platform that connects via the internet to the core banking platform back end of any bank that wishes to issue QUISC accounts. And by doing that connection, we are able to associate a mobile phone number and a PIN with the customer's bank account. So the customer, once they register for a QUISC account, is then enabled to do transactions and to make payments using QUISC as the mechanism, the mobile phone number and PIN as the mechanism to access that virtual debit account that's been created at their bank. We are not a wallet. We do not hold the cash. The customer's money is safely resident in their bank. Did you wish me to elaborate on any other aspects of it, or is that enough of an overview? You know, one of the aspects of our system that we think uh, makes it um, particularly adaptable to the Indian market is that it works on plain old feature phones. We do not need a data connection. You do not need the Internet to do transactions. We can do our whole range of transactions just using a plain old simple phone and we do that by initiating transactions with text messages. No confidential or sensitive information is transmitted in clear text. The other side responds and receives a code to have the payment released to them. So we have architected this to be a highly secure system and at the same time very, very, very simple to use and to be able to use it on plain old simple feature phones. Mr. Sethi from ICCA Bank. Sorry. Mr. Sethi from ICCA Bank. So we are already doing a lot of uh, new systems in payments. Can you tell us what are the trends set to transform the payment landscape in India in the next few years? 
Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think when we talk about, uh, sorry, am I audible? Yeah, when we talk about uh, payments, what is the meaning is only digital payments now going forward. Uh, so the whole civilization has now got divided into pre-demonetization era and after demonetization era. And uh, so the focus today is how we can make the payments cashless. And uh, on payment front, I think if there is, uh, there, are, there is one area where a lot of innovations are happening in banking space, it is payments. And specifically, when we look at uh, uh, how we see the trends uh, in India, I would like to divide it into two parts. One is certain international trends which have overbearing influence on uh, what is happening in India. And secondly, India specific uh, developments which are happening. So if we look at global trends which are impacting India, first and foremost, technology is going to make the life very, very simple for us. Starting with explosion in adoption of mobile phone, uh, increasing number of uh, smartphones, and then access of internet on uh, mobile. These are the biggest influencers on uh, payment space uh, uh, which is uh, there. So the same is getting reflected in India uh, along with international. What other things technology is develop, uh, bringing in, say biometrics, blockchain, NFC, RFID, right, uh, uh, QR codes. So these are all things which are happening on technology front, not only internationally, but equally uh, good in India. Yeah, at some places, one technology is dominating, at other, maybe other one. So we are yet to see who's the, uh, which, which technology is going to be the winner. And I think it is too early to predict uh, on that front. It will take us four, five years, so we'll see which technology overtakes other technologies. Second uh, development which is happening is entrance of non-banking uh, uh, players in this uh, payment space. So today, anyone and everyone who is having good customer base is trying to enter the payment space. So we have uh, hardware manufacturers, Apple, Samsung, Pay, so they have entered the payment space. We have uh, e-commerce play, players, so Alibaba is there. We have merchants, so abroad we have Starbucks, uh, right, uh, that has entered into space. Telecom providers, Vodafone is there, M-Pesa or uh, Airtel Money. So basically, uh, at China you will also see uh, 10 cents. So anyone who has customer base is trying to enter into this space to get more and more share from the customer on anything they do on payment space. Third is customer is becoming very demanding and they want today simplicity in uh, experience, simplicity in payment transfer. So uh, in short, they want Uber-like experience, Uber Ola-like experience where you just get in and move out. Rather than focusing on the payment space, you want, uh, these companies want to give them experience, but payment will happen by the way, right? So customers are looking for one touch solutions. Yeah, another development is that we have uh, across the globe now, say starting with the uh, uh, M-Pesa at Kenya where regulators uh, were liberal in uh, giving uh, banking related uh, freedom to telecom providers. So in India also you are seeing wallet players getting uh, where the, our regulators have been liberal in two-factor authentication, doing away with two-factor authentication for smaller payments. So these are the developments which are globally happening and have also impacted India. But if we look at India specific, yeah, merchant network itself is going to grow, uh, forecasted to grow 10x in another three, four years. We have India specific uh, uh, payments, uh, uh, payment solutions, whether it is UPI enabled, whether it is uh, Aadhaar enabled, which is going to make uh, 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 digital uh, uh, profile of customer. And we have Bharat Bill payment system coming in or India QR system 
these are India specific developments which are uh, going to help a lot in uh, payment space. And uh, so with the recent drive of government to push everyone on non-payment space, I see a huge uh, development happening in this space moving to a digital level. Yeah, a new thing arriving this year is the payment banks. Although the licenses were given nearly one and a half years back, most of them are starting this year. In this connection, I will ask the Aditya Birla group, Mr. Anthony, to say what are the new things we can expect from this bank. Because a lot of expectations from the customers that the new payment banks may be able to give better customer satisfaction or experience than the erstwhile traditional banks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the main thank you was actually at least I'm the second last speaker for the day. Because I was wondering, whatever I got, some information, some data I was wondering, will I be able to share? Most of the information got shared. So what is left is probably with some experiences, uh, what we, what I bring in, and what is that we can do. So typically payments, if you look at today, uh, payment determines the primary bank for the customer. So that's why payments become so, so important today. Okay, because acquiring customers, more or less it seems to be okay. Someone gives zero balance, someone gives some benefit, it's all coming in. How much are we engaging the customer is the biggest thing, biggest challenge today. And things have a bit changed. Earlier, if you really look at, there was a lot of demand and demand was actually driving the payments. If you look at last few months or last a couple of years, payments is driving the demand. Okay, so the payments guy comes and says, use my mode of payment, get cash back. Or do this, get this loyalty program. So that also influences the customer and also the demands are increasing. So that's where you're looking at. Now let me get into a little bit detail of what is that we as payments bank can do. Uh, everyone is aware, like 90% of the customers today have a mobile connect, okay? Some of the data points which says more than 70% of the customer today has a feature phone, okay? Out of the balance 30% whatever, major chunk as a digital phone, uh, as a smartphone may have, may or may not have data connectivity. But still they're using it for information. They hardly do any transaction today. So if you look at the entire population, probably five to seven percent of the customer is actually doing transaction using a mobile today. Okay, so we all are fighting for that. Can we look at the larger piece? That's where I think the payments bank will are going to play a role there. We don't have to fight on the place where already payment system exists. I have a card, I have a wallet, I have an ATM outside, I have a bank branch out there. Okay, everything is there for me. Now it's left with a choice. So someone was presenting the last session. IMPS, NEFT, RTGS, UPI, I could see, oh, probably I've used everything. If I just sit back and say, I have a dad, I'm a dad used anything out here, probably the only thing he's using is a card that to withdraw cash. That's the only thing. So huge opportunity out there. That's what uh, we should really look at. So I divide this customer segment into two pieces, probably the digital customers and the non-digital customers. When it's a non-digital customer, is a guy who request some assistance to perform a transaction today or do a payment transaction today, a digital payment. If you look at the life of this guy, today typically he does probably 75, 80 transactions which involve some payments today in a month. Okay, what he's doing? Predominantly cash. For him, 95% is cash. So if you bucket it out, if I can even address his neighborhood store, I can address some of his places around his work area and his residence, I can probably convert 45 or 50 percent of his monthly transaction into a digital payment. Is it complicated to do? Um, yes, the reach is a complicated thing, but I don't really require very high technology out there because hardly any connectivity, maintenance, I need something where there is no maintenance at all there. Someone cannot really travel, there is a problem in the machine. So that's where I can look at one huge opportunity for everyone. Second, there are some things he wanted to do. Probably he wanted to do a bus ticket booking. He can't do it online. He is not comfortable doing it online. 
someone can assist him in doing it yeah he is more than happy to do it so that's where he require an assisted banking and today the big thing what we look at it is probably you cannot have a bank branch everywhere so what what can i give it to this guy the very important aspect was this guy will trust other than the bank probably his neighborhood store because he would see okay any problem i can just walk into him and say hey listen this is what you have done nothing has happened he is much more comfortable so can i bring my banking to that level if you can really you know touch upon this aspect trust me 70% of the cash what he does today will be able to move it into digital we don't want to 100% that's a dream we will still have to achieve it but i think that should be a huge huge game changer for everyone what we can do so what are the various solutions available so you you have seen various solutions which was here so we plan rather we should look at solution where neither the merchant nor the customer really require any intelligent device when i say intelligent device is probably a smartphone or a tab or a laptop probably that store guy will not have it probably the only thing what he carries is his mobile can i do something with that and that too he may not have a data connectivity so sms is one people look at ussd can be looked at big time probably that is one area where the customer and the merchant neither one requires a smartphone today i think that's something can be you will have problem you will have frictions in the payment but it's still worth doing it because you may not be 100% everywhere even the robust system what we have it today is still not 100% we still get rejection we still get failures right that continue to remain we should keep on building that aspect so i think that's something what we should really look at where we can if we if we can really make some change in that we can bring in some change in that we probably we are getting into that piece because when i look at india today we are it's a digital india today most of the places looking at mobile phones internet penetration smartphone penetration everywhere we are number 2 probably in the world what do you want more than that we are already there even when i visit abroad when i look at some of the solutions lot of solutions revolve around smart devices can i go to a store uh, which is probably 100 kilometers from mumbai or thane can i go and give this device to that guy will he do it without any maintenance the answer is no so we should look at a device free mechanism where this guy can walk in and do a transaction today mobile is one thing you link the payment into his bank account wallet account whatever is he is comfortable with it because things are moving one important thing what has happened after demonetization if you look at merchants are pretty more open today a small merchant uh, earlier if you would have gone a year back or 6 months back he has his own reluctant but he is more than happy to meet up large corporates coming and saying the entire ecosystem of us make it digital we don't know how much it can happen even 10% you can move it into digital we have done that's where what we are looking at i think that's what uh, i look at a big uh, game changer which could really happen the real big uh, thing what would really transform the payments in the next 5 years what i look forward is the merchant payment should go by 10x or 15x by 2020 because that's where we do day to day how many times we really do fund transfer hardly you do fund transfer one or two transfer in a month that's fixed you set up an sa is all done you don't even have to get into the net banking but yes merchant payments i do and i'll continue to do it that's where it has to go very high and as i said payment will continue to drive demand and consumption any industry payment will drive and it it's in its peak to drive that particular thing uh other is helping us a lot if you really look at uh, any time the moment is a bank account opening all revolves around is the documents i need to carry this i need to carry that everything is going out just ekyc you are other enabled put a biometric you are done your account is opened you are all done with it that's going to be that seamless so the customer journey will start seamless and that's how it's going to be very very crucial but if you look at what are the things which will really be a challenge today uh, that's the last topic which i'll touch upon the challenge if you look at habit biggest thing is the habit we are used to be or we are used to having using cash we have been doing it we'll continue to do it we'll take some time how does that habit change awareness training we see a lot of things happening government agency the niti aayog is doing a lot of work around it they are doing a lot of digital awareness program they are tasking petrol pumps and wherever people are high where the footfalls are high tasking them to do digital awareness program i have been in some of the forums they said we will give you free place for 5 days be there put your people just do awareness program for us that's the interest what is coming in everywhere i think habit is one thing which will change 
the complexity of using we all know that i don't want to get into detail of it we'll have to make it as simple as possible the simplest thing is put the amount and the mobile number it should be done probably look at low value transaction yeah look at 500 less than 500 rupees or 1000 rupees transaction without anything you lose your wallet your 500 rupees is gone take that way and go ahead with it as long as you can have it out there so that's very important thing second we need to keep on increasing the value proposition for the customer it is not i've done this it's an end to it no way innovation doesn't ends there you need to keep innovating if you don't do someone will do it you will lose the battle that's how it's going to happen i think that's what critical that's uh, from my end thank you thank you antony so he's <coughs> he assisted banking and maintenance free devices huh? these are two very important points i like and also this fintechs so many of the fintechs they have introduced all the new technologies and made it simple for the customers but the only thing that is lacking is the trust factor that is why still the banks are able to score over the fintech companies not only in india but across the world now we have mr jayat aditya from eps youngster with lot of new ideas so let us hear his views how to reach the masses across india where the infrastructure is also lacking thank you uh, so my name is jayat aditya i work in electronic payment and services and i head the strategic alliances team there uh, i would like to point my panelist made here anthony regarding habit it's not only about the habit of a customer that drives payment it's also about the security aspect and there's something that needs to be understand understood today is there is no payment medium that's secure cash is not secure someone can come and steal it from you cards are not secure cards can be cloned mobile banking is not secure your sim cards can be cloned your co banking systems are not secure they can be hacked but at the end of the day the issue is you need to have a comprehensive dispute resolution for when things go wrong so that the customer feels safe that even when my payment has been failed my account has been debited he knows that there's a system in place that takes care of everything he knows that when he is not at fault he is not going to be blamed for it he is not going to be held accountable to it coming to demonetization it was all about making india a cashless country but what people fail to understand is cashless does not necessarily mean mobile cashless can also be your card we've dispersed about 700 and odd million rupee debit cards but there is still no infrastructure for acceptance of those cards with those 700 million debit cards you have i would say almost 70% or 80% of the population that has just been included in the banking sector now you go on to tell them that you have to start using upi which is basically a mobile based application to make payments so again coming back to what anthony said it's all about literacy it's all about awareness it's all about how much the customer is comfortable using and doing and my take away from this is that cards need to actually have more given more importance at least in rural areas cash is still going to be king for the next i would say 10 years and cash is always going to be relevant because even in a market as mature as the us you still don't see apple pay flourishing there was an initial spike in transactions but now it's plateaued people still use their credit cards people still withdraw money so all mediums are always going to be there it's just that right now the way things needed to be executed was the rural market should have been given more importance because the way i see it there is no problem with the urban markets right now if i want to go buy my groceries i have options if i have to make a, a fund transfer to someone i have options with upi coming the picture it's basically nothing but another p2p instrument that has come in uh, maybe in place of imps maybe in place of neft but that solves the problem of only 10% of the population you're talking about india becoming the uh, right now is the second largest smartphone user base in the world is going to become the biggest user base in the world maybe by next year but that still tells you that it's going to be at 350 million odd smartphones we have a population of 1.3 billion so that basically means 1 billion people are still excluded from this entire ecosystem we need to focus on literacy and that is key you need to basically give importance to sms based payments ussd based payments 
you need to make sure that there's a bank agnostic literacy drive that's conducted by maybe NPCI or from a central authority that is focused purely on customer and merchant related payments. Because what happens in most payment modes is one party is always excluded. There are three parties. You have banks, you have merchants, you have customers. And most of the time it's the bank and the customer that is benefited and the merchant is ignored. And that is where the problem lies. Take the simple example of an ATM transaction. When you use your Axis Bank card at an ICICI ATM, it's Axis Bank that pays ICICI for those charges. The same logic should be applied to merchant transactions as well. When there is an HDFC-based POS machine, and if I'm using my ICICI card there, it should be ICICI that's paying HDFC the money and not the merchant. If that MDR is completely eliminated, that is where a digital transformation can actually take place because the merchant holds the, as the incentive to propagate these payments. Because right now, the way the merchant sees it, it's a cut from his commission. It's also that fact that he's not well versed with these payments. You have one million retailers who are POS enabled. With those POS enabled retailers, you're hitting them with mobile wallets. You're hitting them with UPI-based transactions. But what about the rest? The rest need to be given some sort of incentive to hop on this drive. And again, point is you need to look at MDR. You need to start educating the customers. You need to start educating the merchants, period. Thank you, Mr. Aditya. Uh, regard to this merchant MDR, already Government of India and Reserve Bank of India have been talking to banks and in respect of debit cards, during the current period they have already reduced the MDR and after April also there will be a revision in the MDR to be paid by the merchants in respect of uh, debit cards. But in case of credit cards, the customers are enjoying more than 40, 50 days of credit and also a lot of other benefits. So the MDR will remain to be high on credit cards. And already the fees is being shared by the acquirer and the issuer. So if the HDFC card is swiped on ICICI bank machine, both the banks share the interchange. Now, coming to other areas, see, we have always been talking about payments and remittances. But payments also include prepaid instruments. And especially for making payments for train tickets, metro tickets, transport, we have still not developed as a country in implementing these prepaid cards for transport. Thanks to the metros, we have made a beginning, but it is not universal. The card which works for a particular metro doesn't work for another metro. So recently, I had been to London, where they have these oyster cards. A very simple card, which you need not swipe at the stations when you enter. You just touch it. It knows the station from which you are starting. And at the station where you are leaving, again you touch it. Then it calculates the fare and reduces the balance in the account. And the same card can be used in other places like buses or cable cars. And it can be topped up at any station using cash or card. So we need to bring in such systems also, not only working on this UPI and uh, ballots and uh, beam, etc. So we need to look at other areas also. Here again, this uh, toll on highways, this is another major area where this prepaid instruments can play a major role. Now the National Highway Authority of India have introduced something called the fast tag. So you keep that, it is a RFID, radio frequency identifier. You keep it on the car window screen. And whenever it passes a toll, the amount is automatically reduced. This electronic 
toll was introduced in Singapore in 98. And now after 18 years, we are trying to implement it. ICCI had uh, made a... The new technologies and uh, when uh, they emerge. Some of the things which are uh, exciting me at this stage, particularly uh, two things. One is uh, because of simplicity, the India QR code, wherein Government of India has asked uh, Rupee, Visa and MasterCard to come out with a common QR code. So if this gets implemented, then merchants uh, need not uh, have po investment in POS. So mobile phone will act as a payment terminal. So that's very exciting area. I'm sure uh, uh, with common uh, platform, it will become very easy for anyone to uh, transact uh, uh, to pay on uh, using QR code. Other thing which is at very nascent stage though is Internet of Things, IoT technology. So we have seen uh, demo some of the consumer durable companies coming out with products where if uh, your particular, uh, say in a refrigerator, space get allocated and if the vegetables has finished or milk has finished, it will, it will automatically order right uh, to the merchant for filling up that space. So, so next step, what is next step? Next step is obviously payment related to those. And similarly, today we, when we talk about connected devices, yeah, machine to machine uh, communication, connecting automobile is emerging area. So I am sure uh, the same thing will get replicated if we uh, extrapolate this development towards automobile fields. So if you have the vehicle, uh, if the petrol is uh, finished in the vehicle, and as you enter petrol pump, you can imagine, right? Uh, while the petrol gets filled up, automatically payment will go away because the machine to machine communication have happened. Similarly, if there is a requirement of oil in the engine or uh, brake fluid, similarly, that will, that can all alarms will trigger for the requirement and payment will also, also get uh, automatically de debited. So these are the things I think uh, uh, which are very exciting. Besides that, blockchain, we have already done successful pilot. At very early stage, uh, we are. But I think in next, even one or two years, we will see good applications emerging out of these things. So another area regarding innovations. See, there have always been complaints that the regulators are very hesitant to support innovations in many countries. So it takes time for any new thing to be implemented, especially in the financial sector. So Mr. Steve, he has worked with a number of countries. I would ask his experience with the regulators in introducing new ideas relating to banking or payments. The uh, best data that I have seen on the situation out there in, in terms of central bank regulation of mobile payments comes from the GSMA, the trade group um, of the mobile network operators. And as of the end of 2015, there were 93 different countries that had on average three different mobile payment schemes each. And of those 93 countries, something like 57 or 53 of those countries, the central bank had issued mobile money regulations. We happen to be operating in two theaters, two jurisdictions where such regulations do exist. Um, one of those is in the Caribbean, in Jamaica, where the central bank has been very progressive and has written uh, mobile payment regulations that are agnostic in the sense that they level the playing field and they do not favor the mobile network operators. They have architected uh, their rules so that there are tiers of service and that the mobile payment schemes can be used as a way to increase financial inclusion. With our system, and with mobile payments in that country, they want the KYC activity to be done by the bank. So in order to increase financial inclusion, they have to relax the traditional KYC rules 
and do what they refer to as KYC light. And typically, that may mean a customer who obviously does not have a bank account today. They may only have a national ID number and a mobile phone number. They may not own any property. They may not own a car. They may not have a driver's license or a passport or any other means uh, of documentation that are typically required. But they can qualify for a mobile payment account using QUISC because we can program the system so that an entry-level customer has a limit on how much money he can have in his account and how many transactions can be done in a 24-hour period. So that if, for instance, you were having an entry-level account and the maximum amount they could have in the account was $200 at any one time and they could do no more than 10 transactions a day, that account would have no utility for money laundering. And then they have tiers of service going up from there. And their regular banking customers who are fully KYC certified can have higher account limits and more transactions. That seems to be a pattern of behavior that we're seeing in more and more countries that do have regulations about mobile payments. Thank you. He was talking about KYC. And we all know now that... Other based authentication has made KYC much simpler. And that has also been used for opening of accounts, for authorizing payments, everywhere. Let me ask Mr. Aditya how we can leverage this other authentication in payment areas. So when you talk about payments, I'm talking about the problem area here, which is merchant and customer. And Aadhaar-based payments for now is not going to work at least for the next four to five years because we need to first exist, utilize the existing infrastructure we have, which are cards. NFC-enabled cards, which ICICI and HDFC have launched, can be utilized for small ticket payments, token payments. And Aadhaar basically requires a biometric device, which ultimately needs to be connected to a system that will debit or credit your account accordingly which right now in the scheme of things is not the way to go forward. Uh, it would actually be, I don't know, it'll take a few years for Aadhaar to come into the picture. For purely opening of customer accounts, yes, that is doable. Maybe in a branch when a customer wants to make fund transfers, it can make it easier by just telling him to you know, utilize his fingerprint or any other biometric uh, area. Uh, but other than that, when it comes to payments, Aadhaar for the time being is not relevant. Uh, here, I need to defer with him because UIDI has introduced a new application called Aadhaar Pay where the customer need not have any phone or card. The merchant has a smartphone with a small fingerprint device which costs less than 2,000 rupees. And the customer goes to him and while the merchant enters the amount, it is authenticated by the fingerprint of the customer along with his other number. This has been demonstrated by UIDI amongst banks recently. And this is going to be a major game changer in the rural areas where many of them do not have phones. And it will be very easy to implement. That is one thing. The other application which is going to take place is the Beam application, which uh, takes care of the multiple UPI available with all the 30 banks. Let me ask now Mr. Anthony, what are his plans? using other uh, for his payment. I can uh, address that uh, query that you had regarding uh, payments of other, if you would like. Smartphones. You were talking about smartphones basically being enabled to use other based payments. But the point... No, no, it will be linked to UIDI. It is authenticated through UIDI, not right. the fingerprint of other. Agreed. I mean, or the smartphone. But then how will it work? The merchant will need to have a smartphone, right? The merchant will have a smartphone. So point I'm making... Hmm. Other, I mean, biometric device. device, right. 
So this will get a fingerprint. Right. And it will be authenticated at UIDI and comes back and says it's okay. No, no, sir. The function will be perfectly fine. It will work perfectly. But the problem is how do you actually educate the merchant with the use of a smartphone, first of all, and secondarily, the use of the Aadhaar device? Because ultimately, you're talking about targeting a huge sector of the population, cutting across geographies. So this is a very simple this thing. It is a question of educating the merchant. And I have seen the demo myself. And it is not very complex for the merchant to learn this. Because he can get loaded into the banking system. Only the his account number is uh, attached to the application. And automatically, the credit goes to his account. From and the, from the customer point of view, his Aadhaar number is mapped with the NPCA Aadhaar mapper. So from his Aadhaar number, his account is mapped, and the fund is transferred from that to the merchant. And it is a simple uh, application. Uh, it will be easy for the merchant to learn. Uh, there are not many complications in uh, downloading the application and only it's a question of educating them. Of course, it will take time, but uh, it is simple. Uh, once you're in the smartphones, they are all menu driven, and it's very easy to do. Um, just to add, uh, I'll agree with Mr. Ramchandran because today, if you look at telcos, they have started onboarding customers through EKYC. Very small retailers. We are like spread in nook and corner of the country. It's already happening. Okay, so uh, nothing much complicated in it. Yeah, there's always a bit of change. Change is always resistant, but it brings improvement. I'm sure that's going to happen. In our case, if you look at the Hadar based one, I think that's the way the future looks like for me. It's completely it's going to be paperless. When the transaction can become paperless, uh, even the onboarding has to be paperless. So I think Aadhaar will be uh, very much leveraged on the EKYC. That's going to be a very, very big thing. Uh, payments transaction... Yeah, maybe for certain value, for a higher value, you may look at a biometric. For the lower value, I feel it should be friction-free. Less friction, payment is very easy to happen. That's what when you went to London, when you saw the Oyster one, that's what you enjoyed it. Because it is just a tap. You just keep moving. That's it. Rest of the thing, back and what happens, customer doesn't care about it. I think uh, less friction should be there wherever the transactions are repetitive in nature. Other things, I think for a higher value, you should look at uh, authentication. And EKYC is going to play a very critical role. So in India, we are having all the technology and applications. But like Mr. Aditya said, the awareness and education has to be created. The rural population needs to be educated on using these devices through a lot of means, TV, FM or small demos, video clips. We have to tell them the benefits of these uh, small uh, payment apps. And the other area is the infrastructure. So both this awareness and infrastructure needs to improve. Then the customers will be happy to do all the payment applications wherever it is. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much for taking us through that discussion. And uh, with that, I'm going to request all of you to please join in as we hand over mementos to each one of our panelists. I'm going to request our moderator, Mr. K. Ramchandran, to please do so. Ladies and gentlemen, our first memento goes to Mr. Anthony E. for his inputs to the session. Thank you very much for joining us and your inputs. May I request Mr. Sandeep Sethi to please accept this memento. Mr. Steve Nowak, may I request you to please accept this memento. Request 
and Sister Ibn Wa to please accept this memento. Thank you very much. And I'm going to request Mr. Babu Nair to please join us on stage and hand away the memento for our moderator of the session, Mr. K. Ram Chandran. Thank you very much, everybody. And with that, we come to the conclusion. And we'd like to take you through the concluding remarks by KPMG. And we have Mr. Eric Enklesaria, who is going to be joining us on stage to take us through the concluding remarks. So we request all of you to please be with us for just a few more minutes while the concluding remarks take place. Mr. Eric Enklesaria is the partner, management consulting at KPMG. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much uh, once again as far as KPMG is concerned to be associated. We are proud to be associated with uh, IBEX uh, for this event. We've been doing this event for the last two years, uh, three years, sorry. Um, I thank each one of you um, uh, who has eagerly participated in this thing, all the panelists, etc. Uh, I think we'll, what we'll do is we'll post all the summary notes of today's session uh, on the websites uh, of IBEX, et cetera, where it can be easily downloaded because I don't want to come in between your time and the evening right now. So thank you once again. Um, uh, look forward to having you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.